Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the R9 390 Gaming from MSI. So this is MSI's completely custom R9 390 PCB. It's also the best R9 390 PCB I've so like that I've I've seen so far. So with that out of the way, um, let's take a closer look at it. And incidentally, there's a minor issue. Well, actually, I'm not. Well, there's a minor issue of I'm not 100% certain about how the voltages on this card are laid out. I think I'm correct, but I'm not 100% certain. So if I'm wrong, uh, you know, feel free to correct me down in the comments below. Um, but yeah, with that out of the way, let's start identifying different voltages. So first things first. Up here in the top left, we find, well, really, I should just be highlighting the MOSFET and the choke, maybe the driver I see up there. Uh, this is the auxiliary VRM. So this is the memory controller voltage for the GPU core. Uh, this can help a little bit with memory overclocking or a little bit with core clocks. Uh, if you tweak it up and down by sort of 50 millivolts, uh, you do not want to exceed... Uh, 1.2 volts on that on this uh, VRM. That's a very very quick way to kill your card. The memory controller on basically everything ever made is extremely sensitive. Uh, if you exceed the memory controller voltage on a chip by a like the safe memory voltage by a very small amount, it very quickly goes from perfectly fine to very very dead. A perfect example would of this would be, you know, my RX 480 GTR, where I un, un, uh, uh, accidentally gave it 20% more voltage, not the 10 I was aiming for. And really, I shouldn't have just, you know, you shouldn't blindly just give a VRM what you assume is plus 10%. You should always check what the voltage is stock. So, yeah, that was a great idea. And so that doesn't have a... You know, that's what happened to the GTR. If you haven't seen the all the other coverage I've had of that. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is the memory controller VRM. Uh, really great way to kill your card quickly, but it might help you a little bit with overclocking. Down here, sort of in this area, uh, there's the 0.95 volt display drive rail. Well, actually, this is not it. That's a filter. But this is probably the 0.95 volt display drive rail. This is... This powers some of the internal PLLs of the GPU as well as the uh, display output circuitry. Uh, it's worth tweaking this voltage if you're on liquid nitrogen as sometimes, as on some cards, liquid nitrogen causes the display outputs to drop out and tweaking the 0.95 volt rail, the display drive voltage, tends to fix that. Um, but it's also a really good way to try accidentally kill your card. If this voltage, if you raise this voltage too high, that's, you know, bye bye card. Well, you'll lose your display output stuff. It might also kill a PLL. The, if, if you just lose the display output stuff, you might be fine. If you lose a PLL, you're not fine at all. So, yeah, again, this one, also be careful with it. And I do believe that one's also not supposed to go above 1.2 volts, but I would recommend that you go check an R9290X or an R9290LN2 guide before you start playing with that voltage. Um, as those guides do actually mention where this one's supposed to top out, I just can't remember uh, off the top of my head right now. Now then, moving on to what I assume is the memory VRM up here. And I assume this is the memory VRM because we... wait. There. That's the memory VRM. That's the capacitor bank for it. But anyway, uh, what I assume is the memory VRM because we have a voltage controller right here. And this voltage controller does not have a... There's no driver chips in, in this area. There's nothing to actually drive this VRM. So this right here can't be hooked up to this. And this is typically hooked up to the... This typically puts out v, aux, and the auxiliary, and v-core. So those are usually hooked up to this chip. So if this doesn't have a driver, this can't be hooked up to that. Therefore, this has to be hooked up to this. And since this usually does auxiliary, that means auxiliary has to be here. Because this has a driver. And there's no other control circuitry near it. So, that's my reasoning for why that's why this is auxiliary, why this is memory. But not 100% certain. So, you know. Because I don't have the card. I can't actually check uh, with a multimeter how these are wired up. Now then, 
uh, under the memory VRM, we find the biggest and most important vCore VRM. And, you know, that, that's all of them. So the vCore, of course, supplies the bulk of the power for the G of the GPU core. Um, stock current draw on a R9 390 or a 390X or a 290 or a 290X is about 180 amps, which sounds kind of low if you consider some of the newer, like 14 nano, like there's a lot of NVIDIA cards right now, like really power efficient NVIDIA cards are in that same current ball. Uh, well, the 1080 Ti is in the same current draw range. But the reasoning for that is that the uh, 290Xs and the 390Xs and all of those, the 512, the 512-bit memory bus is really, really power hungry. Um, and is the, apparently it pulls as much as 75 watts, but I haven't seen any solid figures with actual like current data for those. Though arguably that wouldn't be too hard to get if you had the right card or were willing to really, really butcher a card that doesn't quite have the PCV layout you need to replace the 12 volt inputs for something you can actually monitor. So yeah, but that basically means that out of the 300 watt TDP, the GPU core on an R9 290, 390, 390X isn't actually that power hungry. It's the rest of the card that burns a lot of power as well. That may, that results in the ridiculous final power draw that these things have. Um, so it's about 180 amps at 1.2 volts, which is the typical stock voltage for uh, 28 nanometer AMD GPUs. So yeah, you know, it's not that bad. Uh, the memory VRM and the auxiliary, I already said, they share about 75 watts in uh, 75 watts combined. I'm not entirely sure how they're split. So, yeah. Uh, now then, let's take a closer look at the VRMs. You know, what they're actually made up of. Starting with the vCore VRM. Uh, the vCore VRM is made up of international rectifier direct fets so these guys right here are irf uh 6811s and those are your high side mosfets and for the low side mosfet uh international right it's uh irf rf 6894s now uh this vrm right here if you know it you know Automatic assumption is one, two, three, four, five, six chokes. We have a six phase on our hands. Interestingly enough, uh, while this right here, the this right here, the IR three five six seven B is in fact a six plus two phase voltage controller. MSI for some to me ungodly reason decided that it's better if they just put uh, three doubler driver ICs behind the VRM. So this VRM right here, like what's actually coming out of this voltage controller is three plus one phases. And that plus one is that auxiliary rail up here. That That's the, that's the plus one. But uh, yeah, um, V-Core is actually a three phase. Now that's not really an issue because the 3567B can put, up, uh, put out up to two megahertz switching signals which means that after it goes through the doublers, you still get up to a mega one megahertz on the actual phases themselves, which is ridiculous overkill. Um, well, not ridiculous overkill, but it will absolutely ruin your efficiency. And I'm not even entirely sure that these MOSFETs will support such a high switching frequency, uh, which is why you don't actually get most VRMs running at really, really like the, the you very rarely get VRMs running above uh, 300 kilohertz which is sort of the standard for most AMD GPUs I've seen so far. They just ship at 300 kilohertz stock. So, yeah. So, assuming 300 kilohertz, and, wait, let me check that I actually did use, yep, okay. 300 kilohertz, 1.5 volts V-Core, because you might actually want to shove that through a 390 one day uh, on water cooling. On air cooling, the issue is, if you put 1.5 volts through an R9 390 on air cooling, your core temperature is going to be so high that any improvement the voltage could have given you will be killed by the ridiculous uh, climb in temperatures because 
the Hawaii GPUs are pretty temperature sensitive. So if you can lop off 20 degrees and raise a voltage 50 millivolts, you'll actually get way more uh, overclocking out of them than if you raise the voltage 100 millivolts and stay, uh, you know, in, say, the 80 degrees instead of, like, 60s. So, yeah, uh, these are pretty temperature sensitive cards. But if you have the right kind of cooling, you might want to push 1.5 volts through this. In which case, uh, with the 300 kilohertz switching frequency and assuming a VRM operating temperature of 125 degrees, this VRM right here should be able to deliver 342, uh, wait, 342 amps of current to the GPU core, uh, continuously, non-stop, no, no, no issues. Uh, one thing to note about this current rating, that is limited by the high side MOSFETs, which more or less lines up with the fact that every time the few R9 290X VRM failures that I've heard of uh, are always the high side MOSFETs, which incidentally the 290X actually uses the exact same MOSFET as this card does, and it's just one phase less. Um, so your high side MOSFET limited, so yeah, 342 amps. It's more than all the other uh, RX, uh, I mean R9 390s I've taken a look at so far. One thing to note is at 342 amps, this VRM should dissipate about 75 watts of heat, which is an absolute ton, and you're probably not going to manage to deal with that. On the other hand, at a much more reasonable, say, let me just quickly, so apparently I didn't finish my notes for this. Um... At a much more reasonable 250 amps for the core, which, you know, that would be like what you're looking at for like a water-cooled overclock or a, well, some kind of daily overclock. You're going to be looking at about 200, maybe even 300 amps. Well, at 250 amps, you're looking at uh, only, only about 43 watts of heat output, which is still very much coolable, especially with the heatsink that MSI puts on this card stock, um, which is a giant hulking monstrosity, like two and a half slots thick. So, yeah. The other issue I have with this current rating right here is I'm actually 90% sure it's wrong, like it's too low, because International Rectifier decided that they're going to spec all of their uh, switching, uh, like all the switching properties of their MOSFETs at 4.5 volts gate, uh, gate drive, uh, so gate voltage. And the problem with 4.5 volts gate to source voltage is... Nobody actually runs 4.5 volts gate to source voltage. Nobody. You don't drive MOSFETs with that. Typically, MOSFETs are driven with either 5 volts or something, well, with something between 5 and 10 volts, which actually significantly improves the switching characteristics of the MOSFETs, which leads to a significant improvement in the efficiency of the high side FETs, which would actually raise this current rating up. So this is sort of a worst case scenario. This VRM can only handle 342 amps. It should be capable of doing significantly more depending on how uh, MSI decided to, like how much power MSI decided, like how much voltage MSI decided to drive the actual MOSFETs with. Um, I'm so sort of suspect that the MOSFET power supply are gonna be those two over there I really wish I had the card in hand, because I could actually check that if I did. Um, so, that's the Core Voltage VRM. It is the best uh, Core Voltage VRM of all the 390s I've looked at so far, as I already said. Um, so, yeah, let's move on to the... And, you know, for daily overclocking, it's fine. For water cool, it's fine. For LN2, I'd want more. <laughs> I've not actually heard of anybody managing to blow up a 290X on LN2, but the referent, like, I'd still want more, and I'd certainly want more switching frequency because the, the the voltage regulation gets really iffy on LN2, so there you'd probably be better served with a larger phase count and, a, you know, higher switching frequency, uh, on like, same switching frequency on the actual phases, but higher phase count out of the voltage controller while at the same switching frequency. Ugh. I swear I did a video explaining how all of this works. You can go watch that if you still don't get what I was just rambling about. Anyway, uh, memory VRM, and I need to get through this quickly now because we're at 14 minutes and I don't really want to go over 20. 
The memory VRM has to put out about 1.5 volts, but if you're going to really push it, you're going to be aiming for 1.8, like you're going to max out at around 1.8 volts, uh, assuming the same operating conditions as the V-Core VRM, uh, including the same 4.5 volts gate source voltage. This VRM up here is limited to 54 amps, again, on the same exact high side MOSFET because everything uses the... Like, this entire card uses the same IR6811s and IR6894s for literally everything. Um, so, yeah, so that's 54 amps for the memory, which is... which should be plenty. And, again, this is worst-case scenario, assuming low gate dry voltage. Uh, auxiliary VRM... Now, because you're never going to want to go over 1.2 volts auxiliary anyway, the high side actually takes less load in low voltage operating scenarios. Uh, this one tops out at 60 amps, still limited by the high side. The low side being doubled up. Uh, there's actually two 68, uh, 6894s down here. Uh, actually is capable of handling 146 amps. So, but that's mostly just to boost the efficiency of this VRM, because for some reason, uh, this one is notorious for running hotter than all the other VRMs on any of the Hawaii cards. Um, so, yeah, at least on air cooling and water cooling, from what I've heard, this one runs the hottest always. So the doubled up low side is probably just, uh, is mostly an efficiency thing. And it does actually help, because assuming that you run the VRM at 60 amps, it's only going to put out 9 watts compared to the 54 amps and 11 watts that the memory VRM kicks out. Um, and this might be hard to cool. And this will probably still be hard to cool, but you won't actually have to hit those, like, you shouldn't be able to hit those ratings on either of them, uh, as they do sort of share the load of the memory subsystem of the R9 two, uh, of the R9 390. Ugh, <laughs> keep mixing that up. There's... Okay, so I think that covers everything, doesn't it? Card's missing a bile switch. That's obnoxious. Um... Yeah, there's no bile switch on this thing, so that's annoying. Um... But... Other than that, you know, nice, nice card from MSI. Definitely, like, if you have one, don't worry about it. If you want one, go ahead. Um, unless you want to do LN2, because if you want to do LN2, you know, things like the 290X Lightning exist. And that's just straight up better. <laughs> so, with that, I think... Unless I missed something, in which case you can mention it down in the comments below, is the end. So thank you for watching. Like, share, definitely share. Sharing my videos helps the most, arguably, other than donating to my Patreon. And subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I did mention my Patreon. There's also a PayPal link, and there's AHOC shirts available. Uh, along, There's a link to all of those things down in the description below. Uh, and yeah... Is there any cool news? Oh, right, I wanted to mention, tomorrow I will be doing an Ask Me Anything live stream. Uh, I think at like 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. I want to start it later and I don't want to run it as long, but it's just going to be, you know, chat about overclocking stuff. So if you have any questions, you can hop on the chat on Twitch and ask me there. And it will be on Twitch because YouTube is just kind of like, I'm used to streaming to Twitch. Because originally I always streamed to Twitch and then I transferred to got a YouTube channel as a side. Like the YouTube channel was supposed to only archive the Twitch streams. Then somehow this YouTube channel became a thing. So yeah, uh, with that all said and done, thanks for watching and goodbye.